Southeast this is Florida. Global Tel Link. You have a prepaid call from Sentinella. An inmate at the Sentinella State Prison, Sentinella, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. You have a prepaid call. You will not be charged for this call. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using Global Tel Link. So I end up, like I said, I end up getting kicked out to the main line. Uh, I end up getting sent down here again. And when I get down here to uh, uh, to to Penela, they uh, they end up snatching me up in R&R. And they they, uh, they said that they determined that that, uh, that I had some sort of uh, safety concerns, that they had received confidential information that I was still involved in SGG activity and that I might have potential safety concerns. And they, they snatched me up when I got right here to R&R, and they put me in a hole. So I ended up fighting it. I ended up fighting it for a while. They uh, they ended up sending me to Corkin for DR, uh, painting DRB uh, review because they wanted to send me to the uh, Restrictive Confinement General Population Housing Unit in Pelican Bay. So um, I ended up landing over there in Corkin with with uh, with um, with, your, with the homie who actually hooked me up with you. I was actually there with his homie at the time. Uh, with the homie clumsy, and uh, and so I ended up landing over there, and so I'm I'm fighting it because they don't want to let me out to the line because they uh, in their eyes that I I still had that I was in some kind of trouble or something like that. So ultimately, uh, I end up I end up Sacramento came down to see me, and they end up clearing me, and they end up sending me back down here again. And so when I get down here, I land right here in, in Cincinnati again, and uh, when I'm out here, they they uh. They came and see me and they said, hey, we're starting a youth defender program. Uh, we're going to send you to Ironwood for a youth defender program, you know. And I was like, because at the time, they started making people eligible for this youth defender program, you know. Which I, at the time, I didn't know nothing about it, but the counselor was like, hey, you're going to go. So I was like, all right, whatever, let's roll, you know. Ironwood is close to my house, too, but, you know, it's still within my county, so I figured, why not? So they end up, uh, uh, they end up sending me to Ironwood. And I got there, and, and the, the staff right there, you know, the, the, the administration was like, nah, you know, because mind you, every prison that I've ever went to, you know, I was involved in the shit, you know, like I was I was involved in drug trafficking, I was involved in the gang stuff, you know what I mean? So I kind of had, you know, a reputation, you know, with, as far as with the cops, you know. So when, when I got there, they were like, nah, you're not, you're not going into the youth defender building because apparently the youth defender building was kind of like a... I guess I was like an honor, an honor building or something, you know. So administration, was, I go well. That was the only reason I was sent to this prison is because I was supposed to go to a youth defender program, whatever that is, you know. And, and they were like, "Nah, well, you're gonna have to be here for a while before we let you in the building and see what, where you're at." So um, I was there probably for about seven, eight months or something like that, and then they end up uh, they end up snatching me up again, saying that I uh, was over familiarization with staff, and um, they end up taking me to the hole in Chuckawalla. And uh, they put me up for transfer. They said they said it was crazy. Is if, the if, uh, IGI put like a little twist on me, basically saying that that uh, that I still owed uh, um, I still owed one year monitor inactive status. But I'm not knowing the 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 ins and outs of the of the settlement when they started kicking all the gang members out. I don't know. I, I hadn't really read in depth about the case law, so I wasn't. I didn't know anything about them. Uh, doing away with the actual with the phase five, but IGI put the twist on me. So what they did is they sent me back to a level four to Sat F, to the CR to the 180, uh, supposedly for my one year monitor and active status. But when I got there to Sat F, um, there was like a, a bunch of uh, other validations of people that validated that got kicked out of the shoe. You know, like a, uh, like fools that had been there a long time, like the last ones that they got kicked out. And so a lot of Morenos there and a lot of the homies and stuff like that that were there. We're like, nah, fool, there's not even, I explained to him the situation, you know, I gave my locker port, showed him everything, you know, that I was coming from the hole in Chukawala, and I told him, like, look, man, they they, uh, they said that's what, you know, and they said, nah, it doesn't work that way, 602, it, there is no, there is no phase five anymore, you know what I mean, like, uh, you know, hit them up, and so I end up 602 in it, and they actually end up granting my 602, so they end up putting me up for transfer and, 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 uh, and sending me to, um, to, uh, uh, to Pleasant Valley, to a level three right there in Pleasant Valley. So I went from Sad F to to Pleasant Valley to a level three, and and I, and I was there for a while, you know. Man, so you had it rough. They they just had you bouncing around from place to place to place. Yeah, yeah, well, 
But it breaks up your time a little bit, you know? Yeah. So what what what, what ends up happening once you, you touch down in Pre- Pleasant Valley? So I, I of course, uh, again, like I said, I was in the mix, you know, so people had already called right there to Pleasant Valley and, 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 uh, and, um, and basically said like, uh, uh, you know, hey, the homie's get, gonna get there. You know, try try to help him out. And, and there was there was one of my boys. There was a seat right there in Pleasant Valley on the mesa, and for, you know, for somebody else that I had never uh, I had never worked through, worked for him before. But my boy was actually in charge of all that man's affairs. So as soon as I got there, you know, he he had somebody slide me the cell phone, and he's like, hey, fool, you know, now that you're there, uh, you're gonna pick up that spot. I need I need your help right there. You know, and so. Of course, you know, anybody that's involved in that shit is usually pretty ambitious, you know what I mean? And, and and I was no different, you know what I mean? So, of course, I was more than willing to, to get involved, you know? And so uh, when he asked me if I could pick up the seat right there, I was like, sure, no thing, you know? And so, uh, so of course, I got involved doing the same shit right there, you know? for I was there for about eight, nine months. And uh, there was a couple guys, you know, there that I had been having a little issue with over, you know, of course, it's usually over, you know, money and drugs. People get greedy and stuff like that. And so uh, one of the guys ended up uh, uh, trying to reach out to another one of them boys. By this time, all the actual gang members, not just associates, but by this time, all the gang members are actually out on the yard, you know. So they're everywhere. They're in Kern Valley. They're right here in Citanella. They're, you know, they're they're in Salinas Valley. They're in the Bay. They're in New Folsom. By this time, all the gang members are out. So, you know... Everybody that had been helping out and doing the things, uh, you know, that that I had been doing for years, you know, is it, basically like now now everybody's got a direct line, you know, because it's it's not hard to correspond or, or or connect with these dudes because they all got cell phones, you know. So uh, one of these cats that that uh, uh that had, that was right down the yard with me was was uh, he ended up he ended up getting in <clears throat> getting in somebody's ear, and uh and basically you know telling them that I that I was up to no good right there, you know that 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 I'm. And so that cat actually asked me about about his brother's business, and and when I basically told him like, hey man, you know, like I, I'm not at liberty to discuss old boy's business with you. If you have any issues about what I'm doing, you know, you know what I'm bringing in, what I'm doing, take it up with your brother. You know, like it, it's this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. And uh, and in the end, they they uh. So he felt disrespected by that, you know. He was like, you know, who the fuck you think you're talking to? And you know, them dudes will get at us kind of foul, you know. Like I said, they, they, you know, they guess they supposedly earned that right to to talk to whoever they want, however they want. And ultimately, that that that's how that played out, you know. So and I was just like, look, man, you know, like, w- wouldn't you want me to to hold your if I was if I was taking care of your business, wouldn't you want me to hold my cards close to my chest? You know what I mean, like, you know. And and he was just like, man, I don't give a fuck what you do, and you know this, and he basically just started getting foul at me. But what can I do? You know what I mean? I can't say nothing. They are who they are. You know, I'm just I'm just another pawn on the on the puzzle. You know, so they uh that goes by a little bit, and uh excuse me, that goes by for a little bit, and so <clears throat> that brother starts campaigning against me. You know, he starts reaching out to the to the dude that I work for, and he starts re- and and that guy's like, hey, well, don't worry about it. So then he starts getting at his other brothers, because in his mind he's like, you know, fuck this dude. Who does he think he is? You know, I'm I'm not a brother. You know, I'm just like I said, I'm just another pawn on the on the puzzle. And um, so he starts campaigning, you know, at getting at other brothers, like basically trying to get enough support in his corner to basically uh, uh to basically have me moved on because he realized that that uh that old boy that I that I was doing my thing for wasn't gonna wasn't you know he wasn't gonna change his mind about me so ultimately uh that's what he ended up doing he ended up he ended up getting it uh he ended up getting it approved to go ahead and move on me you know and so um we get to uh uh it ends up getting back to somebody that's real close to me like hey man they uh they pulled the trigger you know that that ultimately it's, it's gonna uh, these fools are gonna get you you know like the old, you know he got so and so and so and so and he mentioned a couple of the, of the brothers' names that he got to support it, and uh, and he's like, they're basically they're they're gonna try to kill you, you know, and 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 ba- that's, you know, figure it out, do what you're gonna do, and so, uh, at the time I was kind of like, all right, well, there's got to be something, you know, and I and and you know, I'll figure, I'll find a way because you know, when, in politics it's all about where you're at and who you know, you know what I mean? Like whatever's there's so much gray area, there's no black and white like it used to be. It's all gray area, you know. So it's like basically. 
you know, if you get the right person's ear and you're talking the right shit, you know, there's always a way to wiggle around it. You know, at least that's that's been my experience, you know. And so I figured, oh, you know what, I, I knew the situation was serious, but but because I had seen enough and I had been through enough, I figured that there was going to be a way out of it, you know. And so the person who was real close to me was like, nah, you know, and, and they were, like I said, they were, they were deep in the, in the center of all that with a bunch of them. And, and, and they were like, nah, you know what I mean? It's, 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 you need to get out of there. You know what I mean? Like this, this person cared about me a, a lot, you know, and, and, and they were like, you need to get out of there. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's no coming back from this, you know, but again, at that time, you know, it, it was, it was, it was pride and ego and, 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 you know, there was a couple of dudes there from, from my old gang, stuff like that, that I just kind of felt like, oh, you know, I can't let these dudes down. What do I look like leaving? You know, like, this is bullshit, you know, this, that, and the other thing. You know, at that time, when, you, when you're caught up in that, you know, it, it, it doesn't, uh, uh, leaving didn't seem like an option, you know. And so uh, 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 one day they actually, uh, they actually, IGI actually even called, called me out of the building to program, and, and I'm thinking, all right, so these fools are probably going to take me to and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. So I walk over there and they're like, hey, check it out. We got reliable information that, that they're going to try to kill you, you know, and this and that. And, and, uh, and, and you know, they basically like, disclosed a bunch of shit that they had heard. And I was like, I was, I'm not worried about it. You know, and they're like, so you're going to sign this thing? So I signed a little chrono right there and I took off. So I spent like the next three weeks, you know, as, as trying to figure out a way to, to, you know, to work the situation out, you know, and, um, and and bottom line, the, the the brothers that I was who I was associated with were like, look, man, just keep your head up. You know, at the end of the day, like these dudes can't, you know, if they decide to do that, that's on them. You know, like I can't get in their business, but but at the end of the day, like you you know what it is. Like don't worry about them. You know, and so for me, it's like I've seen enough, know enough. Like if, if a brother's not really really going to bat for you, then then essentially he's already heard what's going on. You know, what I mean, he's basically like, okay, well, you know what, if if they feel disrespected by you. Who who am I to say I can't say nothing? That's you know each one of them hold their own, you know positioning. So it's kind of like a, a so uh, one day I, I'm actually out there to visit. I go out to visit like three weeks after this stuff's you know coming and going, and I get out there to visit, and uh, and they actually call me into the uh, I'm at the visiting room you know with my family, and, and they call me out. They said hey step out to the back. They had been hassling me like I said because I you know. I was doing my thing and stuff, so they, that I'm assuming they, they thought that I was was doing something wrong in the visiting room, so they pulled me out to the back, and they were like, hey, turn around, cuff up, we're taking your ad seg, and I'm like, what, you, you serious, right here in visit? He's like, you going to do some stupid shit? And they're like, nah, we got to take you right now, we got we got uh, information that your life is in danger, and I'm like, what, come on, man, you could have done this shit on the yard, you know, I'm in visit, you know, like, and they're like, nah, we're taking you, so ultimately they end up taking me to, to ad seg, and when I got back to the ad seg, you know, I, I 602'd it and I tried to fight the situation just to see. And ultimately, I, I knew that I knew that I was done. You know what I mean? I knew that, you know, that I wasn't going to be able to fix the situation, but I was still, like, trying to figure out, like, man, how, you know, there has to be something. I couldn't accept the fact that, that, I, that, that I was done. You know what I mean? Like, I couldn't accept the fact that after everything I had done for these dudes that, that you know what I mean, that they were going to turn their back on me like that, you know, or, or, or come up with some bullshit to find a way to, you know, to fuck me off. So... Uh, I was still living that illusion that there was some some honor and some integrity in what I was doing, and as long as as, as I, I played my cards right, ultimately it would it would it would blow over, you know. But um, when I 602'd it, you know, I was back there for a couple months, and IGI came to me and they said, "Hey man, check it out. You know, here's here's your 602. You know, you're 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 not going back to the main line. You want to check out this confidential memoranda, this investigation report. You know, uh, go ahead, hurry up, take a few minutes." And I looked at it, and it was a they had actually intercepted uh, cell phone uh, phone calls between a couple of uh, a couple members, you know, basically ordering you know ordering for me to get you know murdered. So ultimately, uh, when I looked at it, I just scanned it real quick. It was kind of you have 60 seconds remaining. A little bit of it, and and uh, and after I read it, they uh they were like, hurry up, give us give it back, you know uh. uh we're denying your 602. You, we're going to refer you to DRB. You you can go to RCGP or you can go to the uh, to the uh, DB the DPU, which was like a new unit, a, a new gang unit, you know, like for dropouts. And uh, and I was just kind of like, man, I told him I get the fuck off my door because I was still kind of shocked by the whole situation. And like, man, this is it, you know. And uh, ultimately, they walked away. You know, they walked away from my door. Like, all right, well, that's on you. You know, you're not going out to the main line though. Just so you know that, that that's a wrap. You know. 
and I will send you the RCGP. You can go up there and and and, and play tough, steal, or do whatever you want to do. But but you're not going out to the yard. Your 602 is denied. So um, I sat there and kind of like processed it. You know, you want me to call you back? We can't stop now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs>